to, some, to <coughs> continue in a kind of comparison between Pinker and other thinkers, you know, one of the things that he's indicating is that language is this specific instinct. And you recall Herder had this opposing argument that language isn't a specific kind of skill like other creatures have. You know, remember he, he, he talked about spiders being, a, being able to spin webs and um, bees being able to create honey, those being specific skills. Hatter said, no, humans don't have language as a specific skill. Instead, humans differ not in degree from other animals, but, but in kind, in that there's a sort of basic qualitative difference between humans and animals in which the, the difference is one in which there's a totally different orientation, a different organization of their powers and abilities in humans from, from, human, uh, from animals, right, for other, other, all other uh, creatures. Um, they have uh, basically language as a way of organizing their, uh, their relationship with the world instead of kind of a, you know, bodily structures that, that trap them within one type of environment, right? So bees can only make honey. If there's no flowers around, they're, they're going to die. And, you know, spiders, can, they can only spin their webs. If there's, there are no bugs around, they're going to die. So, but humans, through language, are able to basically work on themselves to, in order to orient themselves for any kind of situation. And, that, and he's seeing that as really a qualitatively different kind of thing, which is not just a specific language module, but in fact a whole reorganization of the entire human organism um, to deal with different environments through self I guess a self-formation, a self-refashioning. Uh, and so he is also linking language to reason itself. He's really saying that language and reason itself are, in fact, inseparable, that you can't really distinguish the two of them, and which is, which is a, a, a different thesis than what, or different, I guess, warrant than what, um, than what Pinker is working with. So Pinker is really assuming that thoughts exist in this separate mental ease that's different from language, and language is kind of added on, right? So, so this is a clear difference here between Pinker and Herder. If we, if we line them up, we kind of get this sense of their different warrants because, you know, they, they, they use the same evidence, right? I mean, Pinker talks in the beginning of chapter 11 about elephant trunks and how the elephant trunk is this, you know, <laughs> crazy, crazy thing. It's really very well adapted, very complex organ, and it's, he's really calling it similar to human language as a very complex organ that's specific to a particular species. So, you know, both Pinker and Hader are looking at, at a comparison of human language with specific organs or skills that, that other species, you know, other organisms have, but they're concluding different things, right? Pinker is concluding that language is also another special adaptation, that's his claim, similar to the elephant's trunk, whereas Hedder is saying, no, you know, we look at the elephant's trunk, we look at, or we look at, the, you know, the, the bee's web spinning ability, and we look at human language, and there's something totally different about that. There's, there's, you can't compare the two. Uh, you, you, you really have to look at human language as really the start of a, a whole new kind of quanti qualitatively different organisms, that, and you can't compare those, those two structures, right? Uh, because for him, language is really a total reorganization of all instincts and skills rather than just one an, an, another added skill um, to the human organism. So, so the, I'm gonna, you know, so the warrant then, you know, Pinker, and so, so they're using the same evidence, getting into different claims, right? And the reason is because they have different warrants. Right? Pinker's warrant is that language exists as an add-on to human reason, which does not change the human ability to shape the self, whereas for Hatter, language is inseparable from human reason, allowing humans to shape themselves to adapt to different circumstances. So this is the, I think this is really the, the difference in warrants that, that's leading them to interpret the evidence in different ways. Right? And then the, the difficulty for Hatter, though, obviously then, or I don't know if obvious, but it's, he has, though, and he can't have an account of the origin of language, because this leap from non-human to human is such a huge leap. How do you get from 
this sort of organization of skills and instincts amongst um, all other creatures and animals to this human organization, they're so different. How do you how do you get from one to the other? He has he actually you know he 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 criticizes other theories of the origin of language, but in the end he doesn't actually come up with his own theory of the origin of language. What he comes up with is a theory of how language fits into you know the the, the human organism and and what kind of role it plays in the way the human organism is organized, but he doesn't have a kind of story about how you get from one to the other. Right? So that's kind of the drawback of Herder's account. Uh, Pinker, on the other hand, he claims that because language is like the elephant trunk, and we can see how the elephant trunk must have developed through evolution and natural selection, human language must have also developed through the same process of evolution and natural selection, right? So, um, so those are the basic differences then between Pinker and Herder's accounts. What I want to continue on though is to, is, is this, uh, is, is to figure out the way in which Pinker then argues about this progress, this, uh, this natural selection process leading to language. So the, the difficulty of, these, of, the, of the language module theory is that if you if you if you want to have a theory of how the language module originates, you know how does it develop? You have to kind of suppose this sudden change as well, right? Because where does the language module come from, right? If you have a, a language organ in the brain, you have to figure out well how did it develop? And what's interesting is that um, you end up with some theories that that are kind of similar to some of the theories that, that Hander was arguing against, namely the creationist one, where it just comes from God. God gave us this language organ. Um, Pinker points to William Paley as somebody that uh, has this sort of a theory, uh, uh, and Elizabeth Bates, who sort of this, talks about this big bang of the creation of the language organ. Um, Derek Bickerden talks about a freak mutation, uh, but here it's the, it seems like it's a very improbable mutation, right? That all of a sudden, zap, you get this one mutation and suddenly somebody can speak. I mean, it seems like a kind of um, improbable kind of thing because it's, it's such a, it would be such a leap, right? Uh, and it's, it's not a kind of a small mutation. Noam Chomsky um, indicates that, at least one point, he indicates that physical laws led to language development as a byproduct of another development, right? So sort of, we kind of fell into it, maybe not through a freak mutation, but sort of through some other kind of change in physical laws. He doesn't really uh, elaborate this too much, and he's not, he doesn't take that so seriously. Chomsky doesn't really. Um, and then, but all these things indicate that the language module is a, is a kind of a different, difficult theory because you're just kind of placing the whole language system within this sort of black box in the brain and saying, okay, this is what causes language, and then it just, it just must have appeared somehow. Um, and there's no, there's no good way to, to explain how it appears because you've kind of enclosed it in this little block box that says, oh, this is the language module. Um, makes things difficult also for Pinker's thesis about natural selection. Because natural selection, you still have to have some kind of account about how that happens. And if it's just the language module box, uh, you know, how do you get this gradual development? Um, it's not so clear, right? 